One of the most delightful plant communities, the woodland flowers, is not a community at all, but instead provides the ground cover found in several other communities. They are the oak hickory, the mixed flood plains, and they flourish in the maple linden community. One very delicate and attractive fern in this ground cover community is the American maidenhair fern, or Adianum pedatum. It is most abundant in rich shaded soils of ravines and beneath moist rocky banks of limestone outcrop. The delicate leaf fronds are circular or horseshoe-like, giving the appearance of leaf laurel to be placed in a maiden's hair. The stems are so small and wire-like that they are hardly noticeable, making the leaves appear to be floating mysteriously six or more inches above the ground. The wild leek, or Alium trichosium, is found usually in colonies on moist, rich soils of woodland slopes and bottomland. Its wide leaves rise out of an onion-like bulb and wither before the flowers appear on a slender scape in June or July. The entire plant has a strong onion taste and odor. Wild leek was used by Indians and early pioneers for seasoning food and as an emergency food supply. American wood anemone, or anemone quinquefolia, is found growing in colonies on rich soils of open woodlands and prairie environments. It blooms from April to June and is the earliest and smallest woodland anemone. Unlike rue anemone and false rue anemone, the wood anemone blooms with a solitary flower and does not cluster its flowers on the stem. Rue anemone, or Anemonella phalactroides, is found growing in the early spring on sloping land of dry open woods. It has flowers that occur in clusters of two or three that are longer lasting than other early spring woodland flowers. The flowering stem grows about nine inches tall with three deeply cut leaves about halfway up the stem. American columbine, or Aquilegia canadensis, is found growing in a wide variety of conditions, from dry soil on cliffs to shady moist soil of the woodlands. It blooms May to July and has a drooping red and yellow bell-like flower. The flower has distinct backward tubes or spurs which restrict pollinators to hummingbirds and long-tongued insects such as moths and butterflies. Its leaves are usually divided into three leaflets, each with three lobes. It's time now for a review. First was American Maidenhair Fern, or Adiantum pedatum, with circular fronds. Wild Leek, or Allium trichosium, with a strong onion odor. American wood anemone, or anemone quinquefolia, with a solitary flower. Rue anemone, or anemonella phalactroides, with flower clusters. And American columbine, or aquilegia canadensis, with a red and yellow bell flower. Indian Jack in the Pulpit, or Erysema triphylum, is an unusual plant. The flower is in two parts. The club-like spadix, called the preacher or jack, is covered by minute yellow flowers. The leaf-like spathe is streaked in tones of purple, brown, and green, and wraps around the lower part of the spadix, and then curves above to form the hood or pulpit. When the spathe withers in the autumn, it discloses a group of brilliant red berries. The raw bulb, when eaten, produces severe stinging sensation described as a mouthful of red-hot needles. K. 
Canada wild ginger, or Acerum canadensis, is found in cool, shady woodlands where the soil is moist in the spring. It flowers in April and May with a reddish-brown flower that occurs in the notch of two leaf petioles so close to the ground it is sometimes buried. Canada wild ginger is an excellent ground cover with heart-shaped leaves remaining through the summer. The roots of this plant were used by the early pioneers as a substitute for Jamaica ginger, which was hard to acquire. Virginia spring beauty, or Claytonia virginica, is found blooming March to May on rich soils of moist, open woodlands. It is spectacular when in bloom in large patches. Virginia spring beauty has many small pink flowers clustered on each stem with leaves that are narrow and grass-like. The plant disappears in late June as the tubers lay dormant until the following spring. Cutleaf toothwort, or Dentaria laciniata, is often found blooming March to May in large patches on rich soils of moist, shady woodlands. Its name seemingly describes both leaf and flower, for the leaves are deeply cut into five segments and the four flower petals curve outward as the roots of a large molar. However, the name toothwort probably came from the tooth-like shape of the fleshy tubers. Dutchman's breeches, or Dicentra cucularia, is found on rich soils of moist woodlands blooming April and May. The flower is well described by its common name, the breeches hang upside down attached at the crotch by a delicate stem to the underside of the arching flower stalk. The leaves are almost fern-like in shape, giving Dutchman's breeches a distinctive appearance. It's time again for a review. First was Indian Jack in the Pulpit or Erysema triphylum with its unusual flower. Canada wild ginger, or Acerum canadensis with a reddish brown flower. Virginia Spring Beauty, or Claytonia virginica, with small pink flowers. Cutleaf Toothwort, or Dentaria laciniata, with a tooth-like flower. Dutchman's breeches or Dicentra cucularia with flowers like small breeches hanging to dry. White fawn lily or Erythronium albidum has many names. Two of the most common include white trout lily and dogtooth violet. It is found growing in colonies in rich moist soils of woodland slopes and bottomlands. Some of these colonies are hundreds of years old. The leaves have a mottled appearance resembling a trout or a fawn. The flower is a nodding star on a single leafless stalk that arises from between the paired leaves. The flower and leaves occur between April and June, then wither and disappear until the following year. Catchweed bedstraw, or Galium aparine, is an annual plant that grows usually in shady woods on damp ground. It blooms subtly in May and June with small white flowers. The stems are weak on the plant, causing it to be prostrate or reclining on other plants for support. The bedstraw has a novel form of propagation, it is readily transported. The stems, which are squarish and rough textured, break easily and attach to clothing or animal fur. 
Later, when they are discarded, the plant will root if conditions are right. Spotted geranium or geranium maculatum blooms from May to June in rich, moist soils of open woodlands and ditches. It is recognized by its palmately lobed leaves and distinctive capsules. It is often referred to as crane's bill because of those narrow beaked seed pods. The flower is saucer shaped with five rounded petals, rose lavender with delicate veining. Although the flower may seem quite different, the household geranium is a close relative to this plant. Sharp lobe hepatica, or hepatica acute loba, is one of the most beautiful of the early spring woodland flowers. It blooms in flower clumps that resemble corsages. Each clump has a different flower color, ranging from lavender, blue, pink to white. The leaves emerge after the flower and may still be found the following spring, flattened to the ground and changed to a red-brown color. The leaves are liver-shaped, and it was once thought that if a plant somewhat resembled an organ of the human body, it was somehow useful in the treating of the disorders of that organ. But the hepatica has proved to be of no medicinal value. Virginia water leaf, or hydrophyllum, Virginianum is a common ground cover of those shady woods growing often in extensive colonies on rich moist soils. It blooms May to July in tight flower clusters held erect above the leaves. The flowers each have five stamens that protrude beyond the bell giving the flower head a hairy appearance. The leaves are broadly triangular in shape and are divided into five or more segments, and the name comes from the peculiar light green markings on the leaves, suggesting watermarks on paper. It's time for another review. White fawn lily, or Erythronium albidum, with nodding star-like flowers. Catchweed bedstraw, or Galeum aparine, with rough or sticky foliage. Spotted geranium or geranium maculatum with a saucer shaped flower. Sharp lobe hepatica or hepatica acute loba with its flower corsages. Virginia water leaf, or Hydrophyllum virginianum, with leaves that appear to have watermarks. Atlantic isopyrum, or isopyrum bitternatum, or sometimes false rue anemone, as the name implies, is not an anemone at all, but appears to be copying another flower. The flowers of Atlantic isopyrum are difficult to distinguish from those of the rue anemone. Both have loose clusters of several white flowers with white petal-like sepals. But its leaves are divided into three segments and then into three leaflets. Each leaflet is deeply cut, much more so than the leaves of rue anemone. Virginia bluebell, or Mertensia virginica, is found on rich, moist bottomland soils blooming March to May. It is an attractive flower that is most spectacular when seen growing in large colonies. The plant stands erect on fragile stems supporting smooth gray-green foliage. The blossoms appear first as pink buds that open into light blue trumpet-shaped flowers. Virginia bluebell is still used in flower gardens, but has a short season as they disappear by midsummer. The interrupted fern, or Osmunda claytoniana, is a rugged and persistent plant in almost any kind of soil or location. It is one of the earliest ferns to appear in the spring and seems to prefer a dry, stony site. The leaves arch in growth with 
distinctive interruptions in the center of the leaf stem that bear the fertile leaflets. All the leaves wither early after frost. Blue phlox, wild sweet william, or phlox divaricata, is a common woodland flower of rich, moist soils of woodland slopes and stream borders. The flower is a delicate blue held in loose clusters on sticky stems. It is well known for its color, beauty, and fragrance, but it is most popular with children because of its timeliness for the May baskets blooming from April to June. Common May apple or Potophyllum peltatum is found usually in colonies on moist soils of open woodlands and floodplain terraces. Most stalks of the plant support a single umbrella-like leaf, but where a branch occurs and two leaves are produced, you can expect to find a flower. This white flower blooms in May on a short stem at the junction of the two leaves and later produces a green apple-like fruit. Common polypodium, wall fern, or polypodium vulgare, grows where rocks and cliffs provide surfaces of rich, often very shallow, subacid soil. It grows with mosses, luxuriant in cool, damp, moist shade along watercourses. Like most ferns, the wall fern does not produce the typical flower and seed for reproduction, but instead develops spores on the underside of the leaves that are transported from one plant to another by the wind. Thoreau referred to the fern as fresh and cheerful communities of the polypody in early spring but they are year-round communities and are cheerful in many seasons. It's time for a review. Atlantic Isopyrum, False Ruinemone or Isopyrum bitternatum, with the flower clusters that are similar to the Ruinemone. Virginia bluebell or Mertensia virginica with blue trumpet-shaped flowers. The interrupted fern or Osmunda claytonianda with the fertile leaflets. Blue phlox, wild sweet william or phlox divaricata with delicate blue flowers. Common May Apple or Potophyllum peltatum with umbrella like leaves. Common Polypodium, wall fern or Polypodium vulgare that is found on rocky cliffs. Bloodroot or Sanguinaria canadensis is found in rich, moist, but well-drained soils. It grows 6 to 14 inches high with a horizontal rootstock. The thick root oozes a bright red juice when cut or broken. As the flower emerges in April or May, it has a single leaf loosely rolled around the flower stalk. The daisy-like flower is born on its own stalk, which is taller than the leaves. After flowering, the leaves unroll, flatten out, and soon grow enough to cover the seed capsule produced by the flower. Feather Solomon plume, or Smilocena stellata, is found in rich, moist woods and blooms May to July. It is a common woodland perennial that is often referred to as false Solomon seal because its stiffly arching stem and leaves resemble those of the true Solomon seal. It has many small white flowers in a terminal cluster that mature in July to August into numerous brown speckled berries that later turn a bright red in the fall. The fruits are edible and were referred to as scurvy berries 
and were probably eaten as a treatment or preventative. Early meadow rue, or Thalictrum dioicum, is a graceful plant of moist woodlands with leaves divided into many round, lobed segments similar to those of columbine. The flowers are without petals or sepals, but display a yellow color from the stamens, which hang like small tassels. The female tassel blossoms are on separate plants and colored purple. This accounts for the Latin species name dioicum, which is from the Greek and means two households. Dwarf trillium or trillium nevale is found in rich, moist woodlands where soils are deep. It is sometimes called snow trillium because of its early blooming habit that occasionally finds it blooming at time of snowfall. The name trillium comes from the Latin word for three. The flower parts are all grouped in multiples of three, the white petals, the green sepals, and the leaves. It also has six stamens and a three-chambered ovary, and usually three or six angles to the berry that develops from it. Big Mary Bell, Bellwort, or Uvularia grandiflora is common to rich soils on very shady upland slopes. The leaves have no petioles and tend to loop around the stem, scarcely unfolding at flowering. This gives the plant a twisted, droopy appearance. The flower blooms early from April to June and can be easily recognized because it is always yellow, drooping, and twisted. The leaves and stems were used by early pioneers for greens. There are many violets or viola species throughout the Midwest that frequent a wide variety of habitats, from wet to dry and woodlands to prairie. Violets typically bloom from April to June, growing low to the ground, usually no taller than three to five inches. Most have a clump of leaves which may vary in shape but are generally heart-like. The blooms may be blue, purple, white, or yellow, and here identification becomes highly technical, for they frequently hybridize. They are probably the most common wildflower of the woodlands, and one of the most loved. It's time for our last review, Bloodroot or Sanguinaria canadensis with the daisy-like flowers. Feather Solomon Plume, or Smilocena stellata, with its small cluster of white flowers. Early Meadow Rue, or Thalictrum dioicum, with round lobed leaves. Dwarf Trillium, or Trillium nevale, with flower and leaves in three parts. Big Mary Bell, Bellwort, or Uvularia grandiflora with yellow, drooping, twisted flowers. And violets or viola species with many hybridized varieties. The reason one remembers the spring woodland flowers with such affection is because we have to remember them. They are with us for such a short period of time. Some have called them flowers that can't wait for spring, and appropriately so. Most of them start early, before the dense leaf canopy can blot out the sun. They manage to emerge, bloom, seed, and wither in only a few short weeks. But the memory of them stays with that woodland throughout the year.